I think Al Pacino can start our discussion this evening. This production would have been impossible without his presence. And I think everyone would like to know how in the beginning he happened to decide to play King Richard III when he could be off in Italy or in Hollywood or one of those lovely sunny places <laughs> playing something by a swimming pool. <coughs> well, well how would you happen to do it? I'm allergic to the sun. I <laughs> well, I, I, um, I've always wanted to do Shakespeare, and I thought it was, it was optional whether I did Richard or Hamlet or Iago and Othello. And uh, talking to David, we discussed it. And I thought, well, let's go ahead and do Richard. Mm. Had you seen it done? Had you ever seen never. anybody do it? You mm. never saw anybody no. do it. I did uh, the first half hour of it at the Actors Studio uh, mm -hmm. three or four years ago. With whom? Was that on your own? Were on you, my own. You worked just, it out yourself? Worked it no out director? Myself. No. <clears throat> the best way to do it. <laughs> mm. What was your concept, David, when he said, uh, when he, said he would do it? You said Al Pacino in anything, and then from there on. What about the idea of the concept of doing it with an actor who hadn't done Shakespeare? Well, I did think that the peculiar combination of, of values uh, required by that, by Richard III, um, is, is are very hard to come by. And yeah. that Al has them. You have to have a well, mar marvelous sense of, of humor for the, yeah. uh, in order to get to the audience. On the other hand, you have to have a great, uh, a great motor for uh, subjective response. And that's, uh, uh, there has to be a demon that gets to the, um, works his way towards the, uh, the crowd. And on the other hand, there has to be someone who's able to talk with an audience and enjoy himself hugely along the way. Yeah. And I thought, uh, where else can we find such a person? Yeah. So, uh, what about the language, Al? Did you work on it at all? I mean, in the fact that it is Shakespearean language, and you've always worked in prose and modern contemporary. I've always, I've always loved language. You see, I've always yeah. wanted to do a, a language play. I even found in the realistic plays I did, when I had enough to say, it would get my motor going. Mm. And I, I, I've always wanted to do that. I, I remember uh, years ago just going over soliloquies of Hamlet and Macbeth, and just doing them in my room or anywhere I could. Mm. Uh, when I did scenes in acting class, I would usually pick scenes that were uh, from Shakespeare. Mm. I, I just love the word. I've always loved it. Mm. And I've never had an opportunity <coughs> to do it professionally. But uh, language is something I always felt can be, can be helpful. A lot of actors feel that language is something you go to. I feel language serves you uh. as an actor. And, uh, and it can. Mm. Very helpful. Are there passages in this that give you, uh, that turn you on, stir oh. you? <laughs> what, for example? <laughs> the opening soliloquy, the various soliloquies in the play. After, after Queen Anne, sure. You'll find that any time <laughs> I have more than a paragraph to say, I get, mm. whether it's right or wrong, it just sort of um, moves in on me. Because I find, interestingly enough, how little we, we use words today especially on my day off when I go into New York or I, I meet people. The mouths are very lazy. We don't talk. Mm. And this <coughs> opportunity to talk and say these things I think is just great. 